welcome to the 2021 edition of the Barter Marine Winter Series Briefing. So we had a few technical issues yesterday um, and hence while, why this has been re recorded this morning. It will provide all the same information and be available online for everyone to review. So I'd like want to just start by saying thank you to Barter Marine, that Elliot and the team in there are fantastic supporters of Evans Bay Yacht Club, and we would like to say thank you and encourage you to go in there and show your thanks as well by supporting Elliot, who gives us some fantastic support. What are we discussing? I'm going to go through the COVID-19 requirements and health and safety. Going to go through the notice of race and sailing instructions. I'm not going through line by line. I'm just taking the key points out of it and we will go through those. Sign on, sign off process. The potential courses we will be running. The post race activities, the prize giving, any questions, and then we will go through the race queue stuff. So straight into it, COVID-19 requirements. Please sign in using the COVID Tracer app if you have it. So we want to track everyone. It's, you guys have all heard this before. We want to keep on top of this so that we can keep sailing. The other thing, obviously, is if you are feeling unwell, do not come down to the club. Um, actually, you can probably hear I'm a bit blocked up and got a sore throat today. Hence why I'm recording this from home and getting it all sorted. But yeah, if you do feel unwell, do not attend. The official meaning of unwell these days is more tired than usual, have flu-like symptoms, a loss of smell or taste, a persistent cough, or a sore throat. And you guys know if you're not feeling well, so please play along with that. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have everyone else there not very happy with you if you give them a, a cold or even worse, COVID-19. So straight into it, notice of race. Um, you would have all seen it online. It's been online for a while now. Um, there are a few key things that we have changed um, from last year, and we have advertised those fairly well through our weekly comms and online. But the race schedule, the reserve day, and the pursuit starts are the three key things that have changed from from what we would normally say happens. So getting into it, uh, notice the race 4.2, race schedule. You'll see that we're starting earlier. So the cruising boats, the first cruising boat away of the pursuit start will be at 10 o'clock. I'll explain the pursuit starts in more detail shortly. The other divisions are 11 o'clock. Yes, that's as earlier than we have previously run winter series. But what we've done is we've sat down as a sailing committee and we want to make use of the warmth after the sailing. If we start at 12, 1 o'clock, it's great during the morning while we're on the water, but the second you get back off the water, the sun disappears behind the hill and it starts to get really cold. So what we're trying to do by moving it all forward is hopefully everyone will be off the water, packing up while it's still sunny, if there's any sun in, sun in winter, while there's still that little bit of warmth, getting everyone changed and getting them inside before it gets too cold. So we don't want people shivering on the rigging area as they're de-rigging. So that's the reason behind it. I realize that it is a change and change can be scary, but we've got to try and make some changes to see whether they work um, and encourage more, more participants which at the moment it looks like it has. Um, as of this morning, we've got 74 entries for the series, which is just blowing our records away from, from winter series. So it's fantastic to see. So hopefully these changes are encouraging others and those that of us have been here for years and oh, it's always a midday start. Sorry guys, it's changing a little bit and we're encouraging the next generation and and more sailors to come in. Reserve day. So to try and get more yachting in, we have also put in a reserve day. The plan behind this is 
again the sailing committee sat down and we basically said we're sick of missing out on Saturday then watching Sunday be a perfect day and no one getting to be able to race. So what we've done, we've put the reserve day in but we do also realise that there's families and other commitments that people have. Sailing isn't the only thing in your life, um, even though for some of us we might think it is. But we are trying to use this reserve day, but we're trying to give you as much warning as we can. So we're going to tell everyone by 2 o'clock on Thursday if the reserve day will be used. The plan behind giving you that time is that it allows, hopefully allows people to rearrange their day, their weekend, sorry, and still keep the family happy, still be able to meet the other commitments, and hopefully everyone gets out and gets some yachting if, if the weather doesn't play ball on the Saturday. Having said that, we ha everything will be the same. Having said that, we will be moving to an earlier start again on the Sunday, so sorry about that. But the idea is on Sunday, it's going to be a little bit of a last minute. Thursday, a couple of days, but it's a last minute thing, so we only want to use the morning. So we're going to start at 10 o'clock for the Round the Cairns divisions. The first boat of the keel boats will be 9 o'clock, but again with pursuit starts, you'll see how that works shortly. And the aim is to be all over and done with around midday, 12.30, and then people still have the afternoon to disappear and do what they need to do if they've bumped stuff out. So the key message from this, Thursday, 2 o'clock, if the reserve day is going to be used, we will be advising then. Into the pursuit starts. So these only apply to the keelboat and cruising division. The idea behind it is that we're wanting to get everyone finishing at the same time. With such a wide range of keelboats, the, the elapsed time for the first boat compared to the last boat is quite significantly different. And we've had the problem that the first boat has come in, finished, done their socialising and they're ready to go home by the time the last boat's only just crossing the finish line. So we're trying to turn it upside down, separate the starts, get everyone back to the club at the same time, everyone can socialise and we can have a great time. So this is a quick diagram of the start box from the seaward side. Uh, it's not the best, I will admit, but it will give you the idea. So the red line's obviously the start line that's painted on the, on the box. Things that you'll see on the start box on Saturday. The course number. The course number will be in the bottom left as you're looking at it from the seaward side. This correlates to the Appendix A, uh, Appendix 1, sorry. And we will go through more of this later. I'm just trying to locate everything for you. The next thing will be the big black board which has the Mark 4 numbers on it. So that when you first get out there, there might not be anything showing. But later on, we will there will be numbers coming up on there. Okay, so now I'll run through a start sequence for the keelboats. So at five minutes to go before the first boat starts, the green flag will come up as per normal at five minutes. At four minutes to go, the blue Peter will appear. Okay, this is a normal start sequence basically. At one minute to go, the blue Peter disappears and the number zero will appear. Okay, this means that the zero boats are about to start. Okay, green flag will stay up for that final minute and then that will disappear and the number will flick over to one. That means those boats that have been allocated a start time of zero are now free to go. So you, where your start is when your number disappears. So what I'll do is I'll just run forward to a boat that's starting on number 15. So you'll see number 14 sitting there. 15 will appear with a blue Peter and a horn. So there'll be horns with all these flag displays and removals. 15, blue Peter, that means you've got less than a minute to go. Then at the start of the 15 group, because we will be running them in groups, we're not running individual starts, it's a 
pursuits that is not a mark for we individual times. They'll be in groups of five or ten minutes. So 15 will be displaying for those that are starting on number 15. When it's time to go, the blue Peter disappears. There'll be the horn. It'll turn over to 16. Those that are number 15 are free to go. Off you go. Go chase the others down. So the key thing to remember is whatever number you are, when your number disappears, you are free to start. Any questions? Oh, no questions. It must be perfectly clearly explained. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to email them through to us and we will attempt to respond as soon as we can. Sailing instructions, key points. Notice to competitors. We will be posting any notice to competitors on the website. The website is the truth of all information. Anything that's not on the website is not true. Anything on the website is true, and that's what we're running by. So the website is the key to everything. We will obviously be displaying our flag if there's a notice to competitors, and we will be attempting to advise via Facebook and WhatsApp that we have put something up. So we're not just going to put it up there and hide it up there. We will be advising that something's up, but it will only be displayed up there. Catch up races. Should the worst case scenario happen that we don't get races in, um, we are able to do extra races on a day. Um, code flag L over E will be shown if we're gonna do that before the first warning signal for that division. Okay, this just allows us to run an extra race to catch up if we need to. Next thing is class and divisional flags. Uh, there has been a little bit of confusion about whether we use class flags or divisional flags for the start. We will be using the divisional flags. So the trailer yachts will be starting with a yellow flag. The open centre board will be using the purple. The multi hulls will be using white and the junior and youth sailability and setable green will be using pink. So while I while this has popped up at setable green, sailability and junior and youth, it's a good time to run through that there will be a lot of boats on the water this weekend or for this series. And some of them are very new. So our, some of our junior and youth sail, sailors are, are new and the setable green fleet is being used to try and encourage those coming out of Lune Sale and those that haven't got much experience to join in in our racing and see how much fun we have with it. So some of them may not know exactly what's going on. They may look a little bit terrified. I know that we've all been there before. First race that I ever did, it was, yeah, pretty scary. So just be aware they're out there and please be kind to them. If you see something obvious that they're doing wrong, just give them a gentle word of encouragement and help them out. Don't yell and scream at them that they're in the way. Give them some encouragement. We want them to come back. So please be wary of that and please help out. Signing on and signing off process. So this is very similar to last year's one. I'll just click on it now and it will pop up in a second, hopefully. It's just coming up now. So there's a button on the website that has, says sign on, sign off. It will take you through to this Google form. For those that don't have a phone or don't have access to, to get online to sign on, we will have the, a tablet downstairs at the club It'll be in by the um, main entrance. So head in there if you haven't got a phone to be able to sign on. The process is pretty straightforward. You just go, if you're coming in, you want to sign on, click the sign on button, hit next. It'll take you through, figure out what division you're in. So we'll go cruising keelboat today. Next, it'll bring up all the boats that have entered. Okay. 
I'm going to choose the walk because everyone wants to be on the walk. We go next and it pops up and says, how many people are on board today? So uh, let's say we're sailing with five, submit, and you signed on. Signing off, exactly the same process, but click the sign off button at the start instead of sign on. So uh, if you can do that, that's fantastic. Um, it is a requirement and it makes life so much easier for the race committee. Uh, the way we've got this set up, all this information dumps straight onto a computer for Pugwash to see and he can go, right, I've got 11 center borders, three trailer yachts and 17 keel boats out here. Um, so if you don't sign on, it makes it difficult for us. So please make sure that you do. Questions again? Nope, no questions. Courses. Cruising and keelboats will have seen at the end of the notice of race, no, sorry, the sailing instructions, there was an appendix one or attachment one that has a list of courses listed one to 12. Please note the date on the list and these are different to what we sailed over summer and they're different to what we sailed last year. So please remember to print out and make sure you've got the latest copy. These course numbers relate to, obviously, relate to what course description you're gonna do. So if we had course six, the courses start out to 18, rounded to port, and back to the finish. If you go to the map on the other side, 18 is the mark at Sunshine or Days Bay. It's somewhere around over that side. So it correlates. Remember going back to the start box image, this is where your course number is going to be displayed. It'll be in that corner. If for some reason one of these one of these courses doesn't work, we've got course number one option in there, which is a special course. If for say there's we don't know what the wind's going to do, it's meant to be super light. We don't know whether it's going to fill in or drop or whatever. We may set a course a special course that's closer in that we can adjust to make it an appropriate length. So we just need to make sure of that. And so just be aware, if special course one is used, we will be advising via VHF channel 77. So yeah, there's where your course number is. On to the courses for the trailer yachts and diggies. The courses will be displayed on the course board down on the eastern deck outside the front of the club. Um, it will clearly state what order you need to go around the marks and it will state approximately where the marks are. We will try and make a diagram to show where they are. We will have two triangle courses or two courses running within the bay. We're going to have the more experienced quicker boats, so the likes of the trailer yachts, the PTs and the centerboard open racing around our normal cylinder marks. And the, we're gonna have the Green Fleet Juniors and sailability around a slightly shorter course and they'll be using the orange spherical marks, okay? The marks look very, very different. If you confuse the two and then come in and tell me that you went around the wrong one because they look too similar, I'm sending you straight to spec savers. Okay, because they look completely different. Do not even try to use that excuse with me. So again, the course board will have it marked out approximately where they will be. So just be aware that there will be different marks in the water and it may mean that boats are heading in slightly different directions to what you would expect around your own course. So just please be aware of that. Questions, we don't need that at the moment. Right, so we've got ourselves off the water. We've all finished, we've enjoyed it. We're gonna do a race day prize giving each day. Um, this will be done as soon as practical after racing. By the time we need to get our um, results done, people have gotta get back to Schaefer's or the boat harbor or down to the marina or the PTs have gotta get off the water and get packed up. So 
we will be doing it as soon as we practically can, as well as also we've got to get results done from our end. So when we know what time we're gonna do it, we'll put it on WhatsApp and Facebook and let everyone at the club know what the plan is. Um, we're not just gonna stuff around to try and keep people there to, to keep the social side going. We're doing it as quickly as we can, so please be patient with us. Housekeeping matters. So the parking on site is not gonna be available. We've got at least 75 entries. Um, we're looking that we may even be over 80 by the weekend. So that's a lot of people coming to the club and we just have not got room for car parking. So please park on the road or otherwise use the public boat ramp at the other end. Okay, We have got clearance to park club vehicles down there. So feel free to park down there. Also, the public ramp is available for dinghies to launch. If, if you want to bring your boat down, rig up down that end and then launch off there, there's nothing to stop you. So if you want a little bit more space, feel free to go down that end. Okay, so that's everything related to racing sorted. The next thing I want to talk about is a thing called race cues. I'm going to show a quick video and it explains what race cues are. It's a, it's a tracking system that we can track how everyone goes, but I'll leave it to the experts to explain it. Nope, my laptop is not going to play it. So, yes, it is a tracking app. The key thing is we're going to do debriefs with it. If people can track their courses, that can then be uploaded onto this Race Queues website, and we can do some analysis on the racing, and we can go through and do a brief debrief. If you go to racecues.com, they have some really good user guides on there on how it works and everything, which is that video I tried to show, but it didn't work. So if we do that, if you go onto racecues.com, follow their instructions, they're straightforward. Even Colt went on this morning and managed to do it, and if he can do it, anyone can do it. So go onto racecues.com, get that detail there of how to use it, and track yourself. Once you've tracked, we're gonna run debriefings on the Tuesday after racing at nine, at seven o'clock, sorry, not nine o'clock, seven o'clock. They'll be run by Phil Williams, they'll be interactive. So you won't just be sitting there being told what you did right or who did what wrong or whatever. It's gonna be interactive, we're gonna chat through. And the key thing is the more people that track, the better it is. So we're wanting to do this for both the Harbour Racing and the round the cans. What we're going to do is so that the round the cans guys don't get bored with the harbour racing being analysed and vice versa, we're going to split them up. So the harbour racing guys are going to be get their debriefs on the 22nd of June, the 20th of July and the 17th of August and the round the can guys are going to be the alternate race days or alternate weeks. So it's the 6th of July, the 3rd of August, and the 31st of August. Everyone's welcome to come to any of them. You'll, you'll learn stuff at all of them. So, yeah, the key thing at the moment, make sure you track if you can, if you're keen, if you're interested, and then come along and we'll be able to figure out who's done what, what right and who could have done something slightly better. Um, so, yeah, give it a go and we'll see how it comes up. In summary, I'll be sending out an email later this afternoon with the WhatsApp details so that everyone can get on that same group. It'll also include information that may have been missed um, last night at the briefing, which I've mentioned in this video. 
Second thing is download that Race Cues app, get it on there, get it tracking. The Race Cues is really good, it doesn't use any data while it's tracking. So it saves it onto your phone, it just uses a little bit of battery with the GPS, but it saves you onto your phone and then you can upload it when you want, once you've got Wi-Fi or when you're at home or, or whichever you wanna do at the end. So it doesn't use a lot of mobile data, which is good. Finally, if you're feeling unwell, do not come down to the club. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. There's gonna be a lot of grumpy people if you're sick walking around coughing and spluttering. It's, we don't want to spread it. Finally, another huge thanks to Barter Marine. They're at 80 Cable Street. You guys all know where, where they are, or online at discount-marine.co.nz. Get in there, support Elliot, he supports us, so make sure you you give him some of your business and yeah, we just wanna say a huge thank you to him again. Other than that, we will see you all on the water on Saturday.